Hi guys, this is Ranjit and welcome to the Tech Q&A for August 2022. And I've taken a variety of uh, questions that you guys have posted from uh, Twitter. So let's go over uh, them now. Some uh, off topic questions also, but I feel that could be interesting. Okay, the first question I got, this is a smartphone related uh, question for Pixel 6a. Uh, this is by Rahul. He says, I was very excited for the Pixel 6a. I was also. Uh, but looking at the various bugs in pricing, uh, dropped the plants and decided to buy the iPhone 13 in upcoming festival sales just wanted to know how significant difference in uh, iPhone 12 and 13 uh, currently uh, he says he's using iPhone uh, 12 but planning to replace my wife's one plus six with the 13 uh, you can definitely go with the <clears throat> iPhone 13 the biggest difference I would say uh, compared to the iPhone 12 to 13 would be the battery life what I've noticed is the battery life is significantly improved on the iPhone 13 so you can definitely go for that if uh, your wife is okay with iOS uh, this is by Ayush. Uh, he is saying, can we consider Motorola the best mid-range brand in 2022? Images using Gcam are amazing. Also these days, security patches release every month. Ayush, I don't think so. security patches are released every month. They release uh, security patches every once in three months or something like that. And yes, Motorola is improving quite a bit. I would say from last year, they are doing a, f a far better job in the mid-range market. Sadly, uh, the Samsung uh, in the mid-range is disappointing. So so yes, of course, the Motorola is doing a good job. Uh, yes, the default camera is weak, uh, as you've told, but yeah, if you use Gcam, then you get actually far, far better results. Uh, this is by Ankit. He's uh, saying, many of us like the pictures that are close to natural, but someone who wants to capture a picture with bright face tones, not like Vivo or Oppo, uh, where we see a white patch on the face, should we consider uh, uh, should consider which phone? Budget is a high as a 60 to 70,000, but a cheaper one can also be considered. Ankit, if you want uh, close to reality, then you can definitely go with the iPhone. Uh, you can get the iPhone 12 in this uh, budget. The skin tones are generally really closer to the uh, reality and also in fact i would say the pixel uh, 6a uh, pictures also human subjects pictures they don't try to over brighten and, and make it whiter so these are also actually closer to the natural skin tone so these are the two options that you can consider this is by uh, Mr. Singh. He says, what's the reason behind one of uh, once the big brands like Sony, HTC, LG, Nokia, Blackberry, etc. vanished from the smartphone market? A very, very interesting uh, question. I would say uh, uh, Sony and HTC, uh, Sony always... Uh, actually had heating issues in their smartphones uh, and also Sony and both HTC used to price their phones very high compared to others in the market and I think so that's where Samsung actually took the edge that's why Samsung survived LG used to make great phones uh, but problem with LG as you guys know is the marketing their marketing department they could have got the award for the uh, worst marketing uh, for their smartphone. Nokia again, as, as you know, uh, they didn't adopt Android earlier. They went with Windows Phone and the Windows Phone failed, which eventually actually killed uh, Nokia. So Nokia is almost dead. Right now, some of the Android phones they release here and there, but again, hardly any traction because the pricing is absurd uh, for the phones that Nokia launches in India. So people just don't care about it. Blackberry again, as you know, their whole uh, thing was based on that uh, whatever messaging system for free that you could do but in the new age we had what apps like whatsapp with android and other application which essentially actually killed that uh, um, uh, thing and the physical keyboard was the forte but with the advent of iphones uh, people got used to the virtual keyboards and most uh, that blackberry messaging was no longer a usb so they actually died uh, next question is from mr Banerjee. he's saying uh, a different question for you this time. Which Indian bank do you think has the most technologically advanced net banking and mobile banking platform currently and also the state of the art technology uh, advanced core banking system? Mr. Banerjee, I can't talk about every bank because uh, I haven't used uh, banking platforms on all the banks. But let me talk about my experience. I have uh, a couple of bank accounts on ICIC Bank, uh, HDFC Bank and even City Bank. Uh, I would say the worst one out of them is City Bank their online banking system is just 
too too basic and for doing anything i would have to call my relationship manager to get things done and in that way i would say the best experience i had is with icsa bank's net platform uh, you could do almost everything on this one and i actually hardly have to co ever call my relationship manager in fact i even forgot the number of my relationship manager it's so good uh, hdfc is also okay i would say uh, so these are the three ones that i've used uh, i don't know about others a long time back uh, this is a couple of years ago so my, my, might not be uh, relevant my dad had a SPI account if i recall and th that interface was also not that great but i don't know what's the current situation anyways you guys share if you are using different banks and what's the uh, interface is it easy to use uh, intuitive etc anyways this is by fitness freak interesting name should pixel 4a users upgrade to the pixel 6a at the price of about twenty five thousand? a very interesting question uh see i like the pixel uh, 6a but uh, the two problems that i'm having with this one is on mobile data if you use it the handset tends to definitely to get a little bit warm to in fact a little bit hot to touch and that is because of the modem that is used on this one that modem that is basically uh, exynos 2100 variant actually heats up quite a bit on mobile data so that is there and also because of that heating issues it's not good for gamers and i'm still having the fingerprint uh, sensor issue and it's just not me now i know in india uh, six other creators are also having a fingerprint issue and I know a ton of users also having a fingerprint issue but still I'm baffled that uh, Google hasn't given a statement or a specific update don't know when this will be fixed uh, but yeah at 25,000 for exchange excellent uh, phone barring these issues uh, this is by uh, Rupam, he's uh, asking, what do you think about the current wireless charging scenario? Isn't it just a gimmick? After all, we need a wire to power the charging pad and also have to keep the phone intact. Yes, of course. Uh, wireless charging is not truly wireless charging. You have a charging pad through which you have to uh, supply USB power or something. And your phone also has to actually stay uh, stable on that pad. Uh, so it's not truly wireless. It's a contact uh, kind of a charging. Uh, I would say... I have wireless charging on a lot of smartphones and the only place where I use wireless charging is in my car. When I'm just driving, I just place it in the dash there where we have the wireless charger and the phone just gets charged. Apart from that, I also have a wireless charger here around my desk, but I've noticed that I almost never use it because wireless charging is painfully slow and also it heats up the phone like crazy, guys. So yes, you could say wireless charging whenever I buy a new phone, is among those features that i just simply do not care also about okay it's okay to have it but if it's let's say a particular phone does not have it i won't mind it for example i uh, personally liked using the motorola h30 pro that came with the snapdragon 8 gen 1 and i really liked using that phone but that phone didn't have wireless charging and i didn't mind uh, that so that's my perspective about wireless charging uh, this is by uh, Mr. Prakash. Uh, he's uh, asking, Hey, Mr. Ranjit, I've heard people say that it's ideal to go for a second-hand camera, but I'm not sure about it considering the shutter count on the camera. It would be great if you would share a few insights on things to look out while getting a camera for oneself. Uh, Mr. Prakash, uh, this is for static photography, I think so you're asking. Yes, the shutter count is important and you can get uh, to know that very easily. But uh, I personally will not go for a secondhand camera based on my experience because at least for video, this is applicable, guys. Uh, I have been using a lot of DSLRs now for almost 11 years. And what I noticed is that specifically for video, what happens with some of the older cameras is that after three, three and a half years, I don't know, it has happened with multiple brands. Uh, my Panasonic GH5, I had to buy one more Panasonic GH5, even happened with Canon cameras. After generally three, three and a half years, the reliability of the camera goes for a toss. For example, if I'm recording the video, the video might just stop automatically after five, seven minutes or something like that for no reason of that. And I notice this starts happening when the camera gets a little bit old. So the reliability goes for a toss. That is my big issue. And uh, this is not just a, a particular uh, uh, relevant to just one brand or something. I had this issue with multiple brands, with multiple Canon cameras when they got old, started having this issue, reliability issue. Even with the Panasonic GH5, I had to purchase one more. Because that, uh, the second camera, I still have it works. But again, I just can't trust that uh, because many times I do the video recording alone like this. There is no cameraman or something. If the video recording stops, I'm just 
blabbering it's just start rewinding the re reliability is a factor this is very important for video uh, but if you're just taking static photographs look at the shutter speed and the uh, body did it have dings or whatever did it fell or whatever because that can actually create issues i hope this information help but for video work i will not uh, suggest uh, older what do you say uh, camera because of the reliability issues that i've seen across the brands this is by mr dhar he's asking have you watched the recent movie top gun maverick yes i did in fact in theater uh, it is amongst uh, the best sequel films ever have to agree yes the movie stuck to its roots and showed the old ways still work less use of cgi but practical shots do you think tech nowadays should learn from the past which really made take great yes i feel that these days in tech especially i would say it's just about the over hyping of things not getting the basics uh, right and i feel uh, earlier in the tech scenario we used to get far 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 better products in fact uh, brands if you recall guys just about uh, five six years ago brands used to create a smartphone one good smartphone in the mid range and they never used to launch a new phone or something for six eight months every category they just used to launch one good product and they used to support that but today it's a joke every month they release a new product and the quality of the products that you see is going really bad so yes i feel in some ways uh, it's just too much and too much of crapware instead of quality products uh, this is by Vedant. Should I choose the Moto H30 30 or the 30 Pro or the nothing phone one? Usage is heavy for work apps and need a great battery life. As you're uh, telling, uh, you want it for heavy apps and stuff like that. So you need processing power, I'm assuming. So definitely, I would say the Moto H30 Pro that came with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, go for it. It's a fabulous phone. Uh, the camera is slightly weak, but again, with the G Cam, you'll get terrific, terrific results. Uh, one of the best uh, uh, smartphones that I personally liked using in 2022. That was the Motorola H30 Pro, to be frank. Uh, this is by Kaushik. Uh, and this is for electric vehicles. Uh, he says electric vehicle battery maintenance next three to five years. What's the future? Regarding battery, guys, um, for example, let's talk about cars. I won't talk about the two wheelers. Uh, for cars, most of the manufacturers will generally give you seven or eight years of battery warranty. For example, Tata with the Nexon, if I recall, they give eight years of warranty on the battery and about 1,60,000 kilometers. So I think so the warranty on the battery is uh, good enough. Maintenances are actually very, very low. Um, so it's not like our, what do you say, normal engines. So there is nothing to change like engine oil and all these things. So the maintenance is actually very, very low. Just maybe periodic maintenance to check the brake uh, pads and all those things, basic things uh, that is there. So maintenance is definitely low. And I would say electric vehicles make sense, specifically cars. I would say if your run is a lot, let's say uh, if you are, uh, are, are, are driving more than about 30, 40 kilometers per day, then it will make sense because the initial cost of an EV is significantly higher compared to a petrol or a diesel uh, car. Uh, as of now this might change in the future but right now they command a significant period uh, premium and unless you uh, drive a lot you might not be able to recoup the cost this is by arnav uh, is the fingerprint issue on pixel 6 a result of a poor quality of scanner or is it a software issue also do you think google can resolve the issue by ot update also many users are saying that android 13 beta solved much of the issues i personally did not uh, install android 13 beta guys because guys remember it's unethical for me as a reviewer to review a device on a beta software so uh, i didn't install it but let's see currently uh, we got one ot update on this uh, pixel 6a but this hasn't solved the fingerprint issue in fact some of the users i know creators who didn't have the fingerprint issue they started having the fingerprint issue with this update so it is not yet solved let's see that's why i i have hold on for my full review of the pixel 6a i'm waiting for one more ot update to see if google can fix this or not uh, so just keeping my fingers crossed I hope it's not a case of, what do you say, inferior fingerprint scanners on some unit. If that is the case, then it's a hard, it will be a hardware issue. So I hope uh, they can solve with the software update. So as of now, we don't know, no statement by Google also regarding that. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed for now. 
Uh, this is by Guru the Ghost Rider. <laughs> He's asking uh, uh, Galaxy S21 FE versus the iQOO 90 versus the OnePlus 10T, OnePlus 10T, I don't know, versus the Vivo 8, uh, X80. What will be your pick? I want the best camera. He says photo quality matters. Video normal hoga to bhi chalega. Uh, so, so if camera performance is the most important for photography, then among all these, I would pick the Vivo X80. Oh man, the pictures the, that come out with the Vivo X80 are amazing. Uh, and it's just not just because of the software algorithms and stuff. The hardware, the camera hardware on that one is far, far, far superior. So if it's just for photographs, I would say I will pick the Vivo X80. And again, you also have the full manual mode where you have all the controls so you can almost disable some of the gimmicky uh, stuff that it does with your skin tones. So X80 would be my pick. Okay, moving to the next one. This is by Meet Param. Uh, what do you think would be life of nothing phones glyph LED uh, strips? We know that LED, LED would uh, be obviously damaged or maybe some of the LED stops and rest work. In that case, it will look bad. So any replacement of LED strips po possible in service center? Uh, Param, you should not worry about the LED strips on the nothing phone. These are LEDs and LEDs are designed for more than like what? almost 15 to 20 thousand hours and uh, i've been using this nothing phone now and these leds in a particular day don't even light up for one or two minutes so i don't think so the leds will fail leds have a very long 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 life and again if anything happens this will be covered in the warranty so i'm least bothered about the life of the led in fact your screen gets light lit up uh, almost about thousand times more than the uh, glyph uh, lighting at the back so don't worry about that and again if any issue is there in the led lighting which is a defective thing within a month or two it will fail and that will be covered in the warranty so in the life of this led back uh, led glyph interface i'm least bothered about that to be very frank this is by uh Shreyas, he's uh, saying, uh, what's the best tablet for students, especially for notes? Is the Mi Pad 5 good enough or iPads are unmatchable in terms of productivity? Mainly uh, handwritten notes. See, if you have the budget of the iPad and with the iPad, then you'll have to go with the uh, Apple Pencil that cost almost 9 or 10,000 rupees. If you have that kind of a budget, then go with the iPad because the apps that are built for note taking drawing etc on the ipad the android ecosystem simply does not have that quality of apps but if you are on a very tight budget then you can consider the me pad 5 uh, that's my frank opinion oh uh, this is my nishan the last question sort of personal but i'll take it i uh, hope you're doing awesome can you please suggest the best gear for bikes and bike vlogging also missing your auto videos and hyderabadi hindi reviews when we get to see that uh bike riding i will uh, resume quick uh, as soon as possible if rain stops in hyderabad it's raining cats and dogs these days and i just don't like to ride uh, when it's uh, raining uh, regarding the best gear for bikes uh, for vlogging uh, I'm assuming uh, for video work, I would say go with the GoPro. You can go with the slightly older version of the GoPro also. You don't have to buy the latest one. Um, uh, so go with the GoPro 9. Maybe you'll get a good deal now because the 10 has been released and stuff like that. In fact, I use the GoPro 9. So you can go with that. The only problem with the GoPro is that uh, to atta attach an external mic, uh, you'll have to use an adapter or that stupid GoPro mod. So that uh is an extra expense mic uh, you can get easily a usb uh what do you say uh, mic uh, uh, i i am actually not using a very expensive mic in my setup if i recall one of the mics that i'm using is just about uh, what 800 900 rupees and that gets the job but with the gopro to attach a mic uh, they don't have a 3.5 mm <laughs> what is a jack so you'll have to actually uh, go with the gopro mod or uh, uh, that silly adapter uh, but uh, for bike and all these things uh, and stuff, I would still say the GoPro has an edge. I did try the DJI Action 2, uh, but it does have quite a bit of more limitations, I would say, compared to the GoPro. So that's my frank suggestion. So anyways, guys, uh, these were the questions for this August 2022 Tech Q&A session. I hope, guys, you liked it. Again, guys, stay tuned to my channel. A lot of interesting and exciting videos coming up very soon. So anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit, and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.